Let's see. All right. This is episode one of the Hoops Roast podcast. I am the host with the roast, Josh Means. Um, I'm a comic from Sacramento, and I host monthly roast battles at the Sacramento Punchline. Everybody's got a podcast. I figured I'd make mine uh, a podcast where I get to roast people, and I love talking hoop, so we're going to do it this way. I don't know if Hoops Roast is going to be the name of the show going forward. If you're listening to this in the future and it's called something else right now, get over it. Um, I'll have, I'll be the host every week, but I'll have rotating guest comics in some of my favorite people. And to start it off episode one, I got two of my favorite people, two of my favorite comics and two of my favorite people to talk basketball with. Uh, Up first, he hosts a couple great shows or has hosted a couple great shows in the past, including sports ball. That's Drew Absher. Hey, everybody. Uh, Drew, thanks for doing the show. Uh, sports sound- ball was. I understood what you were saying, but it sounded like you were like, he's done it before, but we'll see what he's got today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, you never know. It's been he's a while. I thought you were going he's to- been in the Euro League for the past couple months podcasting, but. Doesn't quite have his fastball anymore. Make it loud for Drew Absher, everyone. <laughs> Whoa, easy, man. I'm still in my prime here. Thanks for having Sports me. Sports ball was a fun show. I won it almost every time I was on. I mm-hmm. think the only other person to beat me was this comic. Uh, he's one of my favorite comics in Sacramento. And whenever we see each other at the clubs after we're done shitting on the local comics, we normally <laughs> talk basketball. And so I figured he'd be a great guest for this one. Everybody, Robert Amoto is here. Thanks Thank for having applause. me on. I think I beat you right. two or three times. Yeah, it might have been. It might have been. I think I was. I don't know. No two. one's keeping track. So I just want to put that out there. You, you, Josh, you're you're right. This is a terrible name for Hoops Roast is an awful name for a podcast. Don't don't call it that permanently. But I will say it is impossible to name sports podcasts. Yeah. I, I wanted to. It rhymes with post. So I was like, maybe the low post, but that's yeah. already a podcast. Of course. Uh, I don't know. Also, there's a podcast called Wrestle Roast, and I'm basically just stealing their podcast. I talk to them about it. Fine, the audience members, yeah. That's, that's yeah. all creativity is, is just stealing something else and turning it into your own thing. Exactly. Wait till you see our, our uh, trivia portion of the show. <laughs> it's called Sports Ball with Josh Means. <laughs> yeah, I've- the most successful thing I ever did was att- essentially taking talk soup and just doing Dr. Phil clips. So I, <laughs> um, I was, yeah, I was going to say like the only good basketball podcast names are just puns on names, you know, like the low post Nate Duncan's got dunked on. We're just pr- promoing all the other, uh, the, uh, old man in the three. Yeah, but oh, that's I a can't... terrible yeah. friend. That's a yeah. terrible name. It's a horrible name. Did he change it? That, that is a bad name. It's a terrible uh, They're all bad names. I, one of my favorites. JJ Reddick's pop, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Pop Don't Lie. Pop Don't it's, Lie. That's like all as the good smoke as it is my gets. favorite one. So. All the smoke oh. is cool, but that's got nothing to do with basketball. <laughs> like, <Right. all laughs> yeah, most, most of the time, though, no, no. The best named yeah. sports content is inside the NBA. <laughs> like, that's the best. That's yeah, as that's good. Right. You can't have anything creative. The last podcast I had that was sports related was called Outside the NBA. <laughs> just because right. we are so far out. Uh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Just that's- talking about what NBA players are doing on the outside. Hey, here's a picture yeah. of uh, Clay Thompson going to the mall. <laughs> yeah, I saw Jason Thompson at the fucking union. Here's a picture of him. <laughs> <laughs> Very Thompson. specific. Yeah, I, well, that's a true story. Uh, Did you really? Yeah, yeah. Was it, was, is the union like a Sac State thing? Uh, no, the union was in Roseville. I saw him a couple times. I saw oh. him at a, another where, one. Uh, what's his Pace name Street. does his shows? Yeah, where oh. Alvin does his show. Mm-hmm. Across the street from where Logan Farr got his legs cut off by a oh, truck. Jesus. <laughs> right. These are deep cut references. Deep Everyone's cuts. like, what does this got to do with basketball? Yeah. You know, are they just talking about local? Even Jason Thompson is a deep cut <laughs> for yes. a basketball podcast. Very deep cut. Yeah. Uh, in case you haven't it's Logan's guessed. fault. You got to drink better. Yeah. I've gotten blacked out before. I didn't lose my legs. All right. <laughs> in case you haven't guessed, I, I, uh, <laughs> we're from Sacramento. <laughs> uh, I figured we had to start with somebody closely, closely related to Sacramento. And what better way than 
the Kings, former center, former all-star, former general manager, Vladi Divac. Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully this doesn't flop. Uh, <laughs> I feel like it might. I feel like it's going to be a... <laughs> yeah, it, it really... What I, it, what I was hoping Drew can anchor this part. Me so too. And then the... he said that he wrote three jokes. So... <laughs> Yeah, I, I I wrote them and and in my head they were trying to be roasty, but then it came out real like uh like 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 uh what do you like a talk show like Johnny Carson talk show monologue? That's what I was. That's what I was saying. Yeah, is I got like fine. all these like roast of Dean Martin roast jokes that are like <laughs> yeah, that's what they boy is this man about. tall? <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> what the fuck's this got to do with anything? I'm like <laughs> I don't even know this guy. <laughs> I'm like this man's net worth is 17 million. Jeez, that. <laughs> Quite a bit of cash. <laughs> How racist can I get? <laughs> I was like, yeah. wait, is he even? I just, I just was doing a bunch of like Serbian Civil War jokes. And then I'm like, this is like, this is not I was fun. trying to think of one of those. Yeah, because I remember he was in that documentary, the the 30 for 30. Did you guys yeah. ever watch the one about him? I, and I didn't Petrovic? watch it. It's really know, interesting. I know his like home about country Chernobyl? thought he was a traitor for a little while. <laughs> That was interesting. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Uh, I don't know. You said that we were going to talk basketball and then roast. Are we doing it in that order? Or are we uh, no, I was thinking. No, of we, doing did it we the just other slip way. him in? Did we just <laughs> slip him in? Like what? Like wow, that guy's so that guy's so fast. Da, da, da. Like did we just do it like that? Like so, it's more yeah. natural. Like it's like the tough Bulls crap. are like, six <laughs> and one. You know who was six and one? Uh, fucking yeah. Gary Payton when he dunked on Vladdy. Yeah, I don't know. If, yeah, if the Bulls win one more, they're seven and one. Speaking of seven and one, Vlade Divac. <laughs> He's so shit. Uh <laughs> um, no, I was gonna say, uh, me and my girlfriend, we she like had some weird interest one day in watching The Last Dance, and she she loved it, but in that they talk about Kukoc and how Croatia was involved in the civil war. And I'm pretty sure it was the same thing with Vladi, with like Kosovo and Serbia and there was some like civil war or something but yeah there's a document there's a 30 for 30 on it where him and Pet whatever Petrovic or whatever some other yeah, Drazen Drazen? Petrovic. yeah Drazen yeah what they're really? fighting they're fighting Ku coach between Doug tunnels like <laughs> yeah. shoot at each other with muscles. <laughs> yeah no but they were like they were like best friends and then they're not anymore because of the civil war and I was like, that that would suck if like you just found out that like uh, Dame Lillard and CJ McCollum were no longer friends because they of some like geopolitical shit that had nothing to do with them. Like well, that's got to be at Kyrie and Kevin Durant. I know. I was gonna say friends? that Kyrie. And... <laughs> <laughs> you that might be real. You moved to Brooklyn. I moved to Brooklyn. You son of a bitch. I moved okay, my back. family, dude. I got, I have a coworker that's like super, uh, like you know whatever he's a nice guy let's just say that he's got some disagreeable opinions i like him though uh flat told, earther yeah he told me he told me the other day he bought a Kyrie shirt on fanatics because he was like i like what he's doing and i was like whatever man i like you i'm not i'm gonna ignore that opinion but uh and then he said that fanatics send him a kevin durant shirt instead <laughs> like they're not they're, they're not sending Kyrie shit to people <laughs> they're That's like hilarious mm -hmm. We know what this is about. No, thanks. <laughs> they're like, your name is Cletus. We're not sending you a Kyrie Irving jersey. Yeah, they're like, yikes. You got to send a Vax card before we send you a Kyrie shirt. <laughs> All right. So I thought that we could start off talking about Vladi, our relationship to him, whatever, how you felt about Vladi. Uh, and then we'd roast him and then end with talking about the season just to get it out of the way. Feel like most people are coming to listen for the roast not really our analysis i think so. you know what i think that's i think that's wrong i think people like hearing idiots talk about sports like mm -hmm. i think that no qualifications at all none yeah, at you all check my podcast history yeah you're you're absolutely that's, correct i love listening to dude i was at the gym the other day and uh this guy there was like two other guys playing basketball with me and one guy said uh yeah kings you know or they were, that's what they were like. Yeah, LeBron needs to retire. And then one guy was like, shit, what LeBron needs to do is come to Sacramento. And I was like, is this real life? Are people really having these conversations in their day? Like, there's people who are like, fuck, man, I know what fixed the Kings. 
if we got LeBron. It's like, yes, that's exactly yes. what I want to hear as far as analysis goes. Look how many people are bad at fantasy, and then that's how they would be as GMs. Like, I just look at that. Like, you never – they play all the time, and I keep them in, you know, and they never win, you know, and then you see who they – I'm like, but those are – that's just the same thing happens on, like, that high level, I think. Yeah, the difference is, is that they'd be even worse GMs because – in fantasy, the, you don't need those guys to play together. You know what I mean? Like, you don't, you can just have like Russ, LeBron, fucking Jokic all on the same team. Then you're like, that spacing would be totally fucked up in real life. And it doesn't you're matter. You're also not convincing your owner to pay them $50 million. Yeah, you're also not doing salaries. Yeah, that's another good point. Yeah, you're like, like shit. Uh, okay, I'm not going to sign Dwayne Dedman to a 23 million dollar contract. Oh, hey, there's Vlade. no way. <laughs> there's no way Vladi understood the salary cap and the money. He's like, yeah, I'm not a numbers guy. I could picture him walking out every time. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Oh, he, this whole- he famously did not know the trade exception rules. Yeah. It's funny that we brought up Jason Thompson because that's he got fucked there. There was like I don't know exactly how the the lingo or the 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 language worked out, but. There was essentially a thing where Vladi didn't under. Oh, that's what it was. He didn't understand swap best and worst. Yeah, honestly. Um, oh, to so pick swaps, people, he didn't understand that. Yeah. A lot of people wanted Ben Simmons to be the first one we roasted, but due to the pick swap trade, we actually had to do Vladi first. Right. Yeah. Right. Because th- that was the pick they ended up using on Markel Fultz. Markel Fultz. Yeah. And that's it, how we got to Aaron Fox. Right. Right. I was just trying to make a joke about why I picked Vladi to roast <laughs> first. And you were like, yeah, Mark L. Fultz. I didn't no, understand yeah. what you said, but Mark L. Fultz. Yeah, I'm like, whatever, Josh, shut up. I'm on my own brain here. I'm on my own tangent. He's like, I'm over here trying to get facts. <laughs> I'm over here getting and shit. Josh, Josh, please, I have my Stephen A. Smith glasses on right now. <laughs> I'm into it. Um, yeah, but that was it, right? Jason Thompson and Nick Stauskas got traded. And <sighs> Vladi gave up three first rounders on accident. I think it was Carl Landry. It was all three of them. All three of them. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thompson, Stauskas, uh, and Carl Landry. And then, like, Philly cut both Landry and Thompson almost, like, immediately. Yeah, they should have cut Stauskas immediately, too. Yeah, he played for him for a few years. This is just Kings fans reminiscing on where guys went. Know. <laughs> you know how bad it is? Because, like, Kings, play, Kings fans always have hope. I feel like, like, Raiders fans always have hope. You know, you just, like, blindly believe in your team. But then when you look at your team – like none of our players rarely would ever start on a contender. Like you look yeah. at it that way. Like yeah. rarely would you have, even when we had cousins, uh, uh, maybe that was the exception. Like cousins would have started on, on every team. But like after that, like even the players that we thought were good and like they wouldn't be starting uh, yeah. on, a, on a contender. Team. It's funny, like it, especially right now with Harrison Barnes, everyone's like, man, Harrison Barnes could be like the perfect bench piece. And I'm like, he's our best player. <laughs> like, yeah. he's, he's literally getting painted on the side of the arena yeah. right now. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, we've needed that to hit so many game winners in his time here. I'm like, yeah. And people guy, are like, the Lakers could use more depth at the wing. <laughs> yeah. If the Warriors are ever looking for a ninth man, Harrison Barnes might be available. I'm like, oh, fuck. Buddy's the exception <laughs> right now because Buddy would be starting on the Lakers. If they yeah. had him and he's on our. Oh bench. yeah, if they pulled the, if they would have done that, I, I was all in favor of that one. I think Buddy yeah. would start on a lot of teams for a little while. <laughs> yes, I think he would get bumped back down. To- yeah, until he goes three for thirteen, and you're like, why is he starting again? <laughs> <laughs> he just shoots, huh? He doesn't he just is firing away. He's he's taking two wobbly dribbles and then pulling up from no matter where he's at. He's got, dude. It, I went to uh, the home opener against the the Jazz. Yes, the Jazz. And dude, I was sat, you know, nosebleeds, of course. But we were baseline, so I could see like what, you know, an extended angle of what the players were seeing. Buddy Heald had this one turnover where I was like, he his guy was never open. He just like threw it straight into traffic. I was like, what did he see there? I gotta know. Like he was, has many turnovers like that. Maybe that's why, yeah, maybe he's just like, that's why I don't pass it. You guys don't get open. So he has his one, and that, 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 that justifies his next four times down, just pull it. Was, it was like, was he hoping Royce O'Neal would, like, tip that ball into the air and it would go in the basket? Like, I had no idea what his goal was there. Like, there was no opening. Yeah, he's a fucking wreck. I hate Buddy Heald. Is that you know what I just saw a picture of is – uh someone had a LeBron versus a Michaels competition and it was like Spud Webb and uh, Muggsy Bogues. 
Like, yeah. But uh, they don't have short players like that in the NBA anymore, right? I was trying to think, but we had Tyus Edney. He was short as hell, too. Uh, Earl Boykins was the last one. Yeah, Boykins. What, what was he, 5'5"? Five, five? Yeah. He's probably the shortest. Trey Young's like, listed yeah. at 5'11", but I don't buy it. Is he listed at 5'11"? Yeah, that's what they list him at, but again, I, I think he's 5'9". I see. Yeah, I don't think he can. can I, I don't think he can dunk. I saw him trying to like get up. Fuck no. He looks short. Think, yeah, he's short. I think it's funny that like Trey Young, like this new rule has like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, is this guy going to be up. in the league in five years? Like, <laughs> like if they change he's another rule, 14 points. <laughs> if they if they like get rid of the three point line, this guy is like essentially just a, a fourth grader. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he becomes the ball. He's the guy that squeegees the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I mean, he's a good passer too, and everything. Yada yada yada. But I'm, I'm oh, they not, should yeah, start getting the rest of Trey Young. All right. <laughs> they should get rid of rules like that and take it back to the '80s. So then the power forwards who can't shoot are dominant again. You know, you just make yeah. it. Yeah, get rid of the three point line and get rid of foul. Like players like Anthony Mason, Charles Oakley. Like those kind of guys, like yeah, get rid of the three point line and the and the other two referees. Make it one referee, <laughs> no three point line. I want nothing but layups. Anthony Davis <laughs> would be out of the league in three weeks. <laughs> yeah, Anthony Davis. Yeah, it's so weird, dude. How how fragile the basketball is with that rule change. Like, dude, like I didn't realize how much Harden was doing. Now that they started like showing it more, like all this, like how how much he was doing. Because I I knew he did it. But I just thought like he was like bumping into people. I didn't know he was catching them on that off arm and doing that all the time. Yeah. Like, dude, and they showed the, well yesterday he did all right. Like he put up good numbers, I think, yesterday or whatever. But yeah, his free throws, he was getting like 11, 12 free, throw, free throws a game. Yeah, he's now he's down to like two. <laughs> they also changed <laughs> the ball they used this year. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say is like the fragility of basketball with a new ball and a rule change that like I mean, would you even say that rule change makes playing harder i wouldn't even say that i would say like it just uh, you're talking about the foul rule yeah. change yeah 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 that rule change um, yeah for the people at home the rule change where uh you know if the, you were playing like that like for so for him and trey young who were relying on on right, but james harden that way. like the thing is is like james harden trey young uh i guess dame lillard De'Aaron fox is part of it too chris paul like all those guys don't need to be playing like that you know what i mean that's why it's so weird yeah. to me it's like what is James Harden? Look what you besides besides getting the foul calls, you get your dude in trouble. Now you're going against the second string. That you're not even going against the best defender anymore. Yeah. Now too, He's there's always that point. there's always that domino effect for sure. But I mean, it's just so bizarre to me that, like, why does James Harden is one of the best shooters? Yeah, he doesn't need to do in the modern no, NBA. What the fuck does he need to like? draw these little ticky tack fouls for? Just fucking shoot. Like you're yeah, so yeah. good. Just work off ball and be. Clay Kevin Durant Kurt, does the same thing. KD yeah. will do that rip through and just immediately try to shoot. And yeah. it's, it's, but that took a year. That took. Work. Remember they got rid of that rule because Kobe was doing that all the time. Yeah, they got yeah, rid yeah. of that thing, and it took a little bit, like maybe a year, and then people just started, you know, not doing it anymore. But uh, yeah. dude, yeah, even uh, uh, what's his name? Um, damn, it, I forgot who I was talking about right now. Not uh, not KD. Anyways, I, I don't remember what I was gonna say. Yeah, it's just it's just weird. I mean, I can't. Yeah, thanks, Robert. <laughs> Good interaction. I was like almost mid sentence, and you're like, "Hold on, I got some, I got some to add here." Just fucking a drivel. <laughs> I uh, I, just went I tried to kind of ramble, and then I realized it wasn't gonna go anywhere. Yeah. And then my face started getting. You're hot. like, you know what I was gonna say was, um, <laughs> you guys watch Knicks Raptors last night? <laughs> like, try to try to bring up anything you can remember. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys got for MVP this year? Uh, Josh, that's what we should do is we should go through predictions that mean nothing. All right. I'm down, I got, I'm down with that. I will say I had a very hot take at the beginning of the year, according to some of my coworkers, that I'm like doubling down on right now. Carmelo Anthony, sixth man of the year. Yeah. I, I You know, the games that I've seen, he's shooting the ball a ton. And that gives him the chance to have the numbers yep. to do it. And he already has the story. The yeah. fucking 17-year veteran going to play with his arch rival slash best friend, LeBron, backing him up. I, I can see that happening. And and I don't think we're going to have a LeBron or AD MVP storyline. I don't no. think that's going to be in the cards. 
And the NBA is always going to want to drum up any any promotional support for the Lakers. So where does that come from? And I, it was like, okay, Malik Monk could be a good scorer for him, but I don't see anyone in that second unit that's going to be taking nearly as many attempts as Car- Carmelo is. Yeah. So I have a, a, a coworker who's a ginormous Lakers fan, and he was like all pissed off about the signing. And I was like, no, dude, I think he's going to be like, he's going to be getting like 20 shots a night off the bench and probably, you know, oh, scoring a lot of points. Like he's going to be, you know, he's going to be yeah. all over the floor for them. You know, he's going to, he's going to be their literally primary scorer for, for a lot of games, you know? You know, yeah, that, yeah. you know, I kind of watch that with him because if he starts getting in the 20s, <laughs> like he's going to be like, hey, I still, maybe I should, I could yeah, be, maybe I should. Like, I could fit should. in next to LeBron and AD. <laughs> Let me, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, why don't I? I mean, I can easily get to 30. I'm Bump you know, Bazemore to the back of the bench. <laughs> and I was thinking about it. I was like, the only problem that I might face in that prediction is they might need to start Carmelo Anthony. Like, they might yeah. need to come December or January, be like, we got to get some kind of spacing on this floor. That's the only guy on the team who can hit a three pointer consistently. Yeah. I don't know. It's a, that, the Lakers are a mess, and as a Kings, I think they need to oh. stagger uh, LeBron and Russ's minutes even more. Like bring Russ out like right away, let him run with yeah. the second unit. I agree. Like, with don't that. D- don't like you're not saying bring him off the bench, but just stagger their minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's no way he's yeah. I heard no, people he's not that. coming off the bench. <sighs> but here's the thing: is with that is like okay, so what do you do at closing time? Like they still put him in, and but he's here. They figure like, it out. That's the thing is like when you need to close out, he's going to be your biggest detriment is like being like, what are we going to keep this guy on the bench? You can't. I just wonder if they find something in the buyout market that. that oh, what is that? Oh, OK. Notification popped up there. Um, caller over here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if, if they can if they can find something on the buyout market, I just don't know what's going to be available. Is it going to be? I don't know. Atlanta's got a ton of people in the backcourt. Maybe they cut somebody. Is the king think- maybe fucking trade Terrence Davis? I'm just saying, like, they got to get some kind of cheap option that can help them. There's always some um, surprise options that pop up on the buyout market that yeah. help a team, and the Lakers are one of the yeah, especially their teams. Yeah. yeah, the only name that, like, jumps to the front of my mind is like one that's almost too comical to throw out, which is John Wall. Like you got to assume at some point he's going to become available for a vet minimum, but like, I mean, what they'll buy him out in February or something. Maybe I I mean, if I'm John Wall, I'm saying, fuck you pay me $44 million left on my deal. Like go fuck yourself. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be bought out for 20 just because you guys made a bad trade. (laughs) Like (laughs) fuck you guys. Can Can you deny, can you deny the buyout part? You can just say no. Yeah, yeah. Gonna say, you, yeah. you gotta agree to the deal. That's what Kevin Love has done for the last three years, essentially. Oh, he's yeah, he's <laughs> getting like, paid. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll score seven tonight. John Paul, Walls, yeah, Paul John Walls over there practicing with Jalen Green, <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, playing one on one for yeah. forty four million. John Walls just getting fucking toasted by Kevin Porter Jr., who was a year and a half ago in a mental breakdown. John Walls just like <laughs> where <his> life went. <laughs> um, yeah, but I'd like John Wall. I'm just thinking like the Lakers don't have the, and here's the other thing about the Lakers is like, okay, let's say a primary ball handler becomes available. Would you be more likely to go to the Lakers or the Celtics? You know what I mean? The Clippers also need another ball handler. Like there's other teams that need that guy. So, you know what, like who fucking knows where those guys land? I mean, everyone thought, you know, uh, Andre Drummond to the the Nets last year was a sure thing, and it wasn't, you know. So, it's I, they're kind of in a weird spot. I, and as a Kings fan, like I love it, but as an NBA fan, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like the Lakers are the Lakers are like when you play a franchise in 2K for too long, and you're like in year 2035, and your team is like all veterans, and you're like, man, what what did I do? They Where need, did you I don't go think wrong? they just need time? I just feel like they need time, and they'll figure it out. You know? What yeah. I mean? I mean, like adding Russell Westbrook to LeBron yeah. and Anthony Davis is going to be a major change. Russ has never played with somebody like LeBron. Yeah, he played with KD, but 
Uh, maybe Harden had the ball as much as LeBron does. They were younger then too. Yeah, and they were younger. You know what I mean? They're all yeah. whatever coming yeah, up. Together. I guess. I guess that's this always is different been... when you're. Go ahead. I was going to say it's different again. when like your game's established or your like ego's already established as like a superstar. You're used to getting a certain amount of shots, putting up triple doubles. You know, so yeah, that's that's I, why I, it was always so weird to me when people were like. Oh, Russ, Russ is going to be a triple double a night for the Lakers. I'm like, he was like a 45% usage player that year. You know what I mean? Like he was like very, very heavily used. So I'm like, where, where do you think he's getting those touches from? I didn't, I never, I mean, I'm certainly not in the minority on that, but when, even when they made that trade, I was like, eh, I don't see this really paying off ever, you know? I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I know everyone's kind of in this mindset of like, they just need time. And I'm like, I don't think, I, to me, they feel like that that OKC team with Russ and Paul George, where it was like, yikes, is this working at all? Like, even when it goes well, is it working? I don't know. Yeah. I always put, well, LeBron always felt like he had weird mixes that, not weird, but it's like you look at it at first, it's like, how's this going to work? You know, even with Bosh and Wade and then Love, and I know they could shoot better, and, and Kyrie, but he seems to like, I don't know, like he seems to be able to adjust his game around them. And I think, I think Anthony Davis would be, I don't know, I just feel like, yeah, obviously they're old, but um, it is interesting. I think Russ will get, like, low triple-double numbers. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Josh, and, I – oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that they're one of the teams that once they make it to the playoffs, they have a chance. They have yeah. the players that can make it happen. Yeah. And to, don't let them get Trevor Ariza back, man. 36-year-old Trevor Ariza. <laughs> How many times well, has he been on the Lakers? Is it, <laughs> almost as many get times, rid of his locker? Almost as many times as Dwight Howard, <laughs> who's, who's there for his third stint. Yeah, dude, dude, I thought, is that you think that's weird when you come back to a team? I was thinking about that, like Dwight Howard coming back or like someone who's been, who was there for a while and like yeah. Al Horford back to Celtics. Back I was like, is that weird year. when you walk back in? Yeah, coming back the next year's got to be, uh, you know, you got to feel a little bit like a, like a neighbor who just like keeps coming around. You know what I mean? Like you're bothering people all the time. Like, ah, Hey, sorry, me again. You know, that's gotta be awkward. You're right. I, I was going to throw out, can I give a hot take? I don't know when sports ball will ever be back. So I, I can't all your hot takes. I, I that's think, why I started this. You stopping sports ball helped me start this. Yes. Good. I got this hot take. I've been sitting on for the last couple months. I think LeBron James needs a scandal. I think that guy needs something. I do not like LeBron James at all. And it's it's impossible to explain why, except that everything he does feels contrived and manufactured. And I'm just like, this guy needs, he needs a fucking Jordan gambling thing or a Tiger Woods cheating on his wife thing. Like he needs something to humanize him. I can't root for this fucking guy. I oh, yeah. Like, I I, what do you think would be the good pick a scandal? Like, what would be a good level scandal that he can come back from? You know what? I was thinking about this, Robert. I'm glad you brought it up. He needs to get involved in some like, you know how he's got like all these charities and everything like Human that. Human trafficking? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Not quite. That. Is he I good was, enough that you I can forgive that? I was. Yeah, he's <laughs> OJ was almost good enough to come back from killing his wife. I mean, yeah. Is he good enough? He's 10 points away from passing Kareem. Do they sit him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's chasing Kareem. He needs to be chasing Jeffrey Epstein as the greatest of all time. Okay. Um, no, I, I think he needs like, he needs to have some kind of like charity, you know, funneling money scandal or something like that. <laughs> not, I don't think he can come back from that. No, dude, he'll, he'll like be a, fine. He'll be oh, fine. Where, 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 okay. Where it's not him. It's like the guy who is running it is, is shady. Exactly. And he yep. didn't know. And some shit like off. that. Where, yep. Okay. Exactly. Where, Everyone goes like LeBron should have been paying better. Like he needs some heat. The only heat he's ever gotten is the decision. That's the only heat he's ever gotten. Yeah, and I don't know. I LeBron's one of my favorite players of all time. So I, I was glad he never, you know, had an incident in Colorado. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Kobe but, was putting up numbers after that. I, <laughs> you, this is like he was human. Everyone knew he was a. Uh, That's when he went Mamba. Yeah, he got the tattoos. 
Yeah, nothing like a good old cussing more. Negation to really knock you down a couple pegs, you know? That's what I've yeah. always said. I did know a got- girl that went to a, a party at some fuck it's some big event here in Sacramento that the Cavs were at, and LeBron was hitting on this chick while being married, and that's big enough scandal for me. Uh, okay, I yeah, do know I something. I don't know if this is hearsay because my it's it is from my, my I will say Do you have a source cousins. that's credible? If not very it's credible Robert. cousins cu- cousin's husband, all right. Uh it was a, a wait, bouncing cousin. Demarcus bouncer. Cousins husband. Yes, yeah. I was like, dude, <laughs> wait, that's the rumor. Demarcus Cousins no. is really in a in a he was bouncing <laughs> at a club in DC at the time. This is like when you know John Wall was killing out there, and then uh LeBron and them came through. And then some girls were arguing. Did the John the Wall dance? Heroin needle <laughs> sticking from his arm. <laughs> <laughs> Two uh, women apparently started getting arguments over him, and he said, "No." He's like, "Why don't you guys both get butt naked back and, and fight at the hotel?" And they all got on the bus. LeBron and said that. Yeah. Yeah, but see, is that yeah. even scandalous? Like. It- you know, Tiger Woods was a scandal because it was like, holy shit, this nerdy fucking golfer is knocking down Perkins waitresses just because he's horny. Like, that's crazy. LeBron, so bad. two bitches at a club in Washington, D.C. wouldn't even make me fucking yawn. I'd be like, dude, this is the most boring shit I've ever heard. Of course, LeBron cheats on his wife. Of course he does. He, he he's not vow. going to hang out with Carmelo. <laughs> Took a vow. Yeah, you're talking to two <laughs> married men, all right? Yeah. That's not Loser. okay. <laughs> Till yeah. death do us part. Does it not mean anything to you? Who do you think those talking women about, were outside that money club? Change anything? Both of your guys' wives. <laughs> <laughs> she was with them in Akron. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I, it's, every time I, like, watch LeBron talk, right. I'm like, this is he a guy. Like a Ruggs scandal? Like a, like just a, a scandal. like a Henry Ruggs? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Like yeah. A, just Raiders a little receiver, that little man, somebody. like a light manslaughter. Yes. Uh, involuntary. Manslaughter. Yeah. Uh, Caitlyn Jenner hit somebody with his car. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hit somebody he, with their car. Uh, this is the thing is he's getting too close. To, and I'm not I'm not saying this jokingly, but like even magic, you know, the 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 circumstances <laughs> surrounding oh his AIDS diagnosis <laughs> humanized him. Dude, we, we want our athletes oh. to be relatable. You know what I mean? We want them to have problems. And LeBron, comes out has, that LeBron has bulimia. I got it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's what LeBron needs to do. He needs to do a, like a sit-down barbershop interview, and he needs to talk about the Delonte West stuff. He needs to just put it out in the open and just be like, here's what was happening at that time. He needs yeah. to talk about that. Here's he, the... He, the yeah. scandal is he got Delonte West hooked on crack. I don't know if That's you saw it. Delonte yeah. uh, a couple yeah. years ago. He looked like a couple me years now. ago. He just got arrested. <laughs> Did you hear about that? He just got arrested. No, a couple Mark, days. I thought Mark Mark Cuban picked him up, right? And then he yeah, like, dude, Mark him Cuban up. unable to Shark Tank that motherfucker, dude. He's yeah, back, Mark Cuban, back, uh, back LeBron crack. spy. Yeah, yeah. Sent by LeBron. <laughs> yeah, you talking about Mark Cuban? You mean LeBron's pedophile buddy? You know. LeBron's fucking that's who he's human trafficking to Emoto. <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah you can Delonte West I like got, that. I like that angle. You yeah. can keep banging my mom, but you're gonna have to smoke crack. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna have to fucking get hooked on smack and be fucking pushing shopping carts around F- Fort Lauderdale for the rest of your life, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, but like if LeBron would just like the fact that he's never talked about that, like be a fucking human, dude. Like, like that that rumor happened. You had one of the worst finals appearances of your life and then left. Like, talk about the circumstances surrounding that. Even if you're not mentioning it by, like, you know, Delonte West fucked my mom. He doesn't need to be that direct. But, like, I want to hear him talk about those human emotions that was going through. Like, even that rumor had to have affected I- I want to hear him describe Delonte fucking his mom yeah. like Fifty Shades level fucking yeah words. i would have i would have loved to see him crack like during a finals interview like why did you why did you pass up on this shot because i'm thinking about delante fucking my mom like, yeah. what are you talking about i was thinking about his skinny body on top of her overweight body <laughs> her blubbery <laughs> rolls that's what i saw last night are you like you guys want to get real you got can i get real with you guys <laughs> a man with lips tattooed behind his ear plowed out my mom in the fucking nba finals and that, he that didn't was take his headband off it's disrespectful 
<laughs> yeah, it's just crazy to me, man. Like that guy, Javale McGee whenever, was in the room. <laughs> whenever I watch him, he like doesn't even talk about. I mean, I'm sure he has, but he doesn't even talk about like growing up without a father that much. Like he's just kind of like, I work for Nike in China. You know, like that's all he is. Yeah. Like he's just a. He walk- is like a walking advertisement. Yeah, it he's- sucks. It's the worst way to have an athlete. It's, it's and Tiger was like that for a long time. Remember, like not, they had nothing on him for the longest time. My girlfriend bought this book, Young, Black, Rich, and Famous, and it's about it's called The Rise of NBA: The Hip Hop Invasion and Transformation of American Culture by Todd Boyd. Everyone should pick oh, it up. Yeah. But the first the chapter man has a book. Same same title. I haven't read a fucking page of it, but I'm sure it's good. <laughs> uh, but she was telling me that the first chapter was all about Allen Iverson and how he made basketball cool. And I was explaining to her like. He made basketball cool because he was antithetical to everything that the NBA was at the time. That was what was yeah. cool about it is he yeah. wasn't he wasn't falling in line. That's why people fucking like Allen Iverson. People don't like Allen Iverson. I mean, people like him as a player, but I mean, if we're being honest, his he is beloved for that yeah. reason. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so every time I see LeBron in a postgame interview, I can't even take his criticisms of himself seriously. They all just sound so manufactured and contrived. Like I said, I don't know. That Remember was- that one time he he slipped and he said, "You guys still got to go back to your home." Like I was like, "Hey, you slipped." That's like what you really think, dude. Like, even his, like, oh shit, you slipped even, right there. Even his shit talking. That video that came out in like the early weeks or the early, I guess maybe game two or three of the season where he was shit talking campaign. You guys saw that one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. He's saying that something. you were at home. Even that, he wasn't like he wasn't calling that guy bitch made. He wasn't saying he's like a pussy or I'll see you in the locker. He's just Your like wife tastes like fucking honey. What was honey nut Cheerios? Yeah. Honey yeah. nut Cheerios. <laughs> yeah, such Your a that's not. That means that's, mean, that's not. First of all, that's a. Something's wrong. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, that's that sounds like a, my wife. I, I no wonder if she's I, your wife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's good for your heart. But yeah, like LeBron <laughs> talking is even like, hey, you're not as good as me. Hey. <laughs> Be careful. You're not as good as me. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up and say something cool. Yeah. Kevin Garnett, I've heard him yell from the bench. There's a video of Kevin Garnett oh, yeah. talking a player. I'm like, who's yeah. he even talking to? That guy's awesome. Yeah. But, he's in a suit. Yeah, he wasn't even dressed. He's all trash ass. He's retired. Yeah, he's talking then, shit to Eric I, Gordon. Yeah. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. I think it was this fucking jersey retirement or something. And he's shit talking. <laughs> like, that's the kind of energy I want my fucking basketball players to have. It's the only sport where you can hear the shit talking like that, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It just sucks. That, it just sucks that maybe, and again, I'll say this. LeBron is probably the greatest of all time in my eyes. You know what I mean? I'm not a big let's debate it guy, but he probably is. And it just sucks. It just sucks that we have this Disney version of a fucking greatest of all time athlete. If he, if he stayed with the one team, if he stayed with the Cavs the whole time, would you would you hate him? Never, never did the decision not, and, and like, well, it still, does, still has whatever four championships. Your, your overall question, the answer is like, no, but I don't hate him because of the, the Miami or the Lakers stuff. I hate him just because like, like even Space Jam, even the new Space Jam was like, hey, it's me, LeBron James spending time with my kids. It's like, man, shut the fuck up. Like, I don't <laughs> give a fuck. Be a cool fucking guy. I don't like I'm not I don't watch sports because I want the guy like I want to see the guy go home and eat fucking a hot meal with his wife afterwards. You know what I mean? I want a fucking guy who like is mean like oh, yeah. LeBron James, oh, like, is, like James Harden with a fur coat at a strip club. Like LeBron, LeBron that, I was like, that's what you should be doing. Yeah. Like LeBron talks like every one of my coworkers at Trader Joe's, like have some fucking edge. You weirdo. Why? Why are you so fucking buttoned up? It's so weird. I don't know. I guess I guess I should be nice. The guy's been media trained since he was like 16 years old. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so, maybe he always ha- he does sound like he always has an earpiece in. Like, how do you not fuck up over yeah. that 18 years? You haven't messed up. He's got know? so much to lose. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fuck up either if I had all that. I guess, but like he's also at a point where it's like, how much can you really lose? You know what I mean? Like Michael Jordan. His dad died because he was gambling too much and then went and played baseball for two years. And that yeah, guy LeBron doesn't have that, so he should be gambling all he wants. LeBron should, LeBron should kill his own mother. That's what he should do. And then LeBron's blame it on have a gambling away. problem and, and blame it West on a gambling. Killed. It's a yeah. guy, you know, pie, I was addicted to pie gal. Yeah, there you go. 
All right. Yeah, Any more hot takes you guys want to get out before <laughs> we get to the uh, roasted body? How much time have we done so far? How long has this been going? It's been like 45 minutes. Okay, cool. Um, let me see if I have any more hot takes. Oh, What's yeah, your I hot got- take on uh, Zion uh, being overweight? You know, I feel real bad for the kid. Because, like, if you were in New Orleans and you were... 20- I know. What are you going to eat? What the fuck are you supposed to be doing in the South? You know what I mean? Like... Is it, it? It's more remarkable that Stan Van Gundy hasn't had a heart failure incident. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy he made it through an entire year in New Orleans without fucking collapses with a bit with a bib yeah, on. He's got the crap bib. He just he just fucking goes down on the sideline, and the person doing CPR has beignets spit into their mouth by Stan Van. <laughs> just fucking, my dude just got fucking shrimp in his teeth. It was just like, how was how'd Stan Van make it an entire year down there? But uh. Yeah, like <laughs> that's what you should know. place bets on when Stan Van Gundy dies. <laughs> yeah, they had to fire him for his own well-being, dude. <laughs> They're like, yeah. Stan, like, hey man, listen, you're hey. not gonna make you're not gonna make it through your contract. You got to go to Portland. Where the, yeah, the novelty <laughs> restaurants are the not vegan options. You know, like you got to get away from this. Yeah, they need they need him in fucking Key West. That's where Stan Van. <laughs> needs to be. He needs to be doing. There's is there a G League team in in South Beach or something that you can. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> a G League team in my yeah. Uh, <laughs> my feeling, my my Zion hot take is like, it sucks that you like you can essentially be a teenager and have the entire world being like, look how fat this guy is. Like that would suck, dude. Like you're that talented. You put up one of the best rookie seasons ever. I mean, or not rookie, but you know, you second year season. Yeah. Yeah, ever like and people are still 50% like percent from the yeah you shouldn't even his stretch as a rookie the few games he played was phenomenal. Yeah, and then like it's like your all- foot's broke, dude. You can't do cardio. Like I keep I, why like why do they keep not mentioning that? There's like yeah, he's out of shape. Like, like, oh yeah, he's broke. fat. <laughs> yeah, everyone when they mention that his foot is broke is like, well yeah, Jesus, look at what he's carrying around on that. Foot. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like, know, man. Three hundred and forty pounds. He's a fat fuck. You know, his foot would be fine if he wasn't so overweight. His foot and the floorboards are cracking every time he walks. You know? <laughs> That's all anyone's talking about. I don't know. Yeah, I feel bad. I mean, what sucks is I think that Jaw and RJ are going to be, like, very good this year. Yeah. And if Zion's not on the floor, you're going to start hearing the fucking redraft conversations, you know? That's oh, gonna- they've already popped up. I've seen them popping up. Yeah. On yeah. They, every time Jaw, Jaw makes another fucking crazy dunk or layup. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. not fair. Jaw ja went to Murray State, you know? <laughs> How did anyone see that coming, that he was going to be this fucking good? Even at number two, I remember being like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I was not a Jaw believer that draft. Me anyway, either. Let's do I some. I was also rules. big on Zion. Uh, yeah, I think, at, and that was the kind of the thing is like, this would be a good pivot, Josh. Give me some credence here. Is I feel in defense of Vladi and maybe you guys were on sports ball when I threw this out there in defense of Vladi let's just say both players end up having the exact same career Luca and Bagley I let's say it let's just let's just go back a couple years (laughs) as a Kings fan I would have been absolutely irate if the Kings would have taken a, a, a European unknown player at number two over the fucking proven Duke product, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. in hindsight, when you look at that, like that, that would have been if the most Sacramento Kings thing to do is to fuck up that draft by taking the European player over the... the Especially the, like, with it being bloody, I assume they would take the European player. Yeah, like, I didn't... Thought, before yeah. I watched tape on Doncic, I was like, we're going to draft the fucking Euro guy. But then I watched his tape and I was like, all right, we're going to draft the European guy. Yeah, this will be great. Yeah, it, it, I just looking back at it at the time, you know, like I know that all the draft people were like, Luke is going to be an MVP one day and all that. I understand that. But that's what they said about that dude who got taken. What's his fucking name? The dude who got taken before Carmelo. Darko. Oh, uh, Dark, yeah. Darko, Darko Milicic. Yeah, Darko Milicic. Yeah, like. Everyone's like, this guy's the next best thing. And then look at the Pistons probably win more than one championship if they take Carmelo instead. So I'm like, you know, sometimes the devil you know is a safer bet than the devil you don't. And when I look back on that, like, dude, the Kings would have been ripped to fucking shreds if Luka was the next dark, the 
Darko, uh, yeah. Yeah, Darko. God, why, I, I keep wanting to call him Dar- Dario Saric, but that's just, that's just my anti-Eastern European bias. I of. wish Bagley was Dario Saric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would actually be nice. Dario Saric has played more minutes than I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I, I just, that is the best defense of Vlade Divac I could ever give, is like, as a Kings fan, if Luca was a, a half of what he is and Bagley was half of what, or a, two times what he is, I would be like singing the praises of Vlade, you, you know, know it's so sad your fucking math just now if luca was half he was and bagley was twice he was it's still not a fair <laughs> still, comparison course, yeah, yeah <laughs> that still. is true i'm we still get the short end of the stick yeah. bagley tw- two times what he is right now should have still been like a late 20s <laughs> yeah, he's still been, be in college <laughs> you're like is this guy even in the first round we're not sure um Anyway, all right. All right. Uh, we're gonna do some Vladi roasts. Yeah, we are gonna roast Vladi Divac. I went to his <laughs> camp when I was little, uh, which I thought was gonna be like, you know, my calling. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be what was my stepping stone to being a future NBA star. But it yeah. was just unemployed middle school teachers that were coaching us. <laughs> like it was I, like, I like the idea. I like the idea of Vladi Divac having a basketball camp for kids and teaching them nothing but how to run like high post pick and rolls, like just the most boring shit a kid could yeah, learn. He just taught us how to take fake charges. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Vlade is like, all right, here's how you want your feet positioned on a high screen. You're like, what? Why are we learning this? <laughs> he literally only showed up twice. It was a week long camp. He showed up on like Monday and Friday. He gave this long speech on Monday that nobody understood. And then Friday, he showed up to take pictures with everybody. It, it sounds was... like it sounds like his GM stint, essentially. <laughs> ah, <laughs> fucking got him. All right. Nailed him. That's what this podcast is about, folks. That's Oops. what we're going to do. We're going to roast some people. Um, do one of you guys want to go first? Oh, boy. Um, you know, it sucks. I think I... we've talked about all the Vlade stuff I was going to like use as misdirect. <laughs> yeah, same here. We, we brought up we brought up everybody, <laughs> everything. Uh I yeah. Okay. I'll go first. Uh, Vlade I'll Divac. Bomb second. <clears throat> yeah, you bomb second. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait. Josh, do you have a crickets noise ready to go? <laughs> no. You know what you do? You should have a shot clock violation that when you <laughs> know that the joke is going to start oh, yeah, coming, you just play it. Uh, oh, that's funny. Vlade Divac fought through adversity and garnered a reputation for his work ethic, defense, and his ability to pass on 19-year-old generationally talented European MVPs. <laughs> That's the best I got, Robert. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like how you just like the news. Uh, what's traffic like, Robert? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Vladi Divac uh, tipped the ball to Robert Ori, then passed on Luca. I've seen better decisions watching a blind guy put together a salad at the hometown buffet. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. You got frozen. What did you say? Say it again. <laughs> No, I'm not saying it again. That's how it should have went off. I almost believe you for a second. <laughs> By Josh's facial expression, I thought it might have been frozen. That would have been the worst. Okay, so are we all doing one at a time? Or oh, was it? Yeah, was well, it? I'm not going oh, to. You, you want consecutive bombs? Yeah, you want me to carpet bomb it? I'll do it. Yeah, that's what I wanted. And okay, I'll, I'll end I'll it with, uh, with a big okay. one. Um. In terms of embarrassment, passing on Luca is still the second worst front office move he was a part of. Uh, I'm not talking about the Kobe trade. I'm talking about sending Jason Thompson away for and two first round picks. <laughs> um, uh, Vlade Divac is seven foot one and smokes five packs a day. His heart is going to be the biggest failure in the Divac family since general manager Vlade Divac. Um, Vlade wore number 21 to represent the number of years his smoking has taken off his life. That's all. <laughs> all right, Robert. Uh, let's see here. Vladi Divok looks like he sells grass-fed beef out of a Toyota Tundra. Um, <laughs> let me see here. I had some similar. Some of them are just facts. Uh, <laughs> he's <laughs> he's like the self-sabotaging girl in a relationship. When everything is going good, he has to ruin it uh, by blowing your cousin. Uh, but instead of a, a blow job, it was trading Elon Shumpert with a 28 and 25 record to destroy the team's chemistry. A lot of words. It's just, yeah. uh, it just, yeah. <laughs> just facts there. Um, 
Yeah, Robert, are you just reading the notes? Every time. <laughs> on the podcast? These are, I knew, I, first of all, the first one got like, didn't even like get a, uh, like, I didn't see any eyebrows raised. Like, like that was bad. I it was just like, I oh, wait, your Toyota Tundra one or the first one? You no, told? no, no, no. The first one was like, like, that was a complete silence. I, I like that. Um, yeah. I laughed. I thought it was funny. Well, I'll always laugh at a hometown buffet reference. Yeah, we're jaded, uh, me, you know? <laughs> I'm sure the people at home are fucking bent over. Eating a salad at, home, at a buffet. Loving it. That was bad. Um, every time Devok drafts, ESPN and Allen's have to turn the page to find out who he took. Uh, I don't have him <laughs> in my first round. What's his name? Papa Giannis. Sounds like the small town pizza place that only takes cash for some reason. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> That's a good all one. Right. That, that one. is good. I forgot about Papa Giannis. I should. Oh, how could you? You know, know what? I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come out pro Devok okay. here. People forget we traded Marquise Chris for Bogdan Bogdanovich. That's a great fucking trade all the way through. Good for Vlade on that great one. Great trade. Right. Also, five <laughs> picks later, drafted Papa Giannis over okay. Giannis. Hey, they're not all winners. No. Giannis was yeah, no one saw him anyway. Yeah. They're not all winners. Can't win them all. Most of them, most of them are not winners. Uh, <laughs> all right. Vlade Divac was traded for Kobe Bryant. That's like if I traded Drew and Robert for Bill Burr. <laughs> Vladi was in Space Jam saying nobody wants to play, nobody wants to come to the games. Oh, no, wait, that was when he was talking about the Kings. Uh, Vladi was known as one of the <laughs> best fuck. Bad... I don't give a fuck. You mumble mouth fuck. <laughs> fuck off. Josh is going to cut his jokes and just leave ours in. <laughs> oh, I yeah, know. This is shit. He's like, hey, you guys want to see my, my friends doing stand up? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to what these guys wrote as roast jokes. I know he green screens us like at a real roast of Vladi and just bombing. Like he puts us like next to him at a dais. Yeah, that's why he wanted us to all go at one time so you'd have less editing to do. Yeah, I don't (laughs) want to splice all these together. Also, this next joke, you both kind of did a version of, so we'll see. Vladi was known as one of the best passers of all time. He could do it all. Outlet passes, over the shoulder, behind the back. But he'll always be remembered for passing on Luka Doncic. Uh, picking Bagley over Luka is the game six tip to Ori of GM decisions. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> Vladi was on an episode of Married with Children, which is how Doug Christie rode the team bus. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, his wife is big- the. We should have done Doug Christie. I could have fucking unloaded a clip on Doug Christie and his fucking coward ass. Yeah, God. Doug Christie's wife is something else. Dude, uh, Doug Christie is what LeBron James like wants his public image to be. <laughs> 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 um, I was going to say about Vlade, this is not necessarily a roast joke, but is there a player who, in terms of how good they are, was as high up as Vlade was with being like maybe the sixth or seventh coolest player on the team. I mean, that 2002 Kings team had some cool motherfucking players on it, and Vlade Divac was not in the starting five of cool guys on that team. Weber was cooler. Bibby was cooler. Bobby Jackson, Bobby yeah. Jackson was cooler. Peja Pollard. was cooler. Scott Pollard was cooler. Yeah, dude, they were all cooler. Hito Turkoglu was a cooler player than Vlade. Like, that's what you said, like, when we were at the top about talking about Vlade. I will always remember him for being, like, great, but so uncool. Yeah. Like, he was, like, the, the least. And then when I grew up and found out he was, like, smoking cigarettes at halftime, I was like, yeah, that's awesome. Well, Good thing you brought that up to get me back into my second half of my roast. Here. Dude, I didn't, I didn't know you fucking thought it was a Comedy Central roast. Jesus, how many jokes did you write? Yeah, I, <laughs> this I is heard the intermission. you wrote three, and I had to fucking carry the <laughs> leg here. Josh is like, uh, just Drew, send me yours. I'll just reword them. <laughs> they say Ron used to smoke cigarettes at halftime. He'd have to after how hard he got fucked by the refs. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good one. Or do you think he was just trying to avoid talking to Chris Webber? Shaq's, uh, Shaq bought a small percentage of the Kings team while Vladi was the GM just to own Divock one last time. White Chocolate was Jason Williams' nickname and Vladi's diet. <laughs> uh, Vladi has hired and fired more coaches in one season than he had all-star appearances in his entire career. 
Man, that's just sad. <laughs> <laughs> it really that's is. Factual. I've only got that's factual. I've got two more. Uh, that's so upsetting. Uh, uh, find players for flopping when Vladi was in the league. He would owe the league his entire career earnings. Mm-hmm. And Vladi said he wouldn't trade Boogie for anybody but Michael Jordan. Let me let me start that over because I felt mumble mouth as a motherfucker. Fuck you, Robert. Uh, I thought it froze. I thought that, I thought it like I thought it. I thought, I thought it was a glitch. I was like, what just happened? Vladi said he wouldn't trade Boogie for anybody but Michael Jordan, and then traded him for Buddy Heel. That's like telling your girlfriend not to worry about the hottest girl in the world, and then she catches you fucking your your cousins. Uh, whatever. I had better jokes two days ago. Uh, <laughs> That's another shot at Vladi. Fuck it. That was the roast of Vladi Divac. Uh, if you guys enjoyed that, like and subscribe to the podcast. And let me know who you want to see next. We've got a list of players to be roasted. Um, but up next is going to be one of these three players. Send me a message. Uh, it's either going to be Dwight Howard, Tyler Hero, or Sean Kemp. One of those three players is going to get roasted next week. Hit my DMs at J Means or at Hoops Roast on Instagram. Uh, why don't we do plugs? Yeah. Drew, you go first. Um, let me first interject. I got a great one to get roasted. Mm-hmm. Write this down. Grayson Allen. Hell yeah. That's good a good call. one. Um, plugs. Jesus Christ. Um, I will be... Um, I'll Red plug Sav something on for Friday. Good. Yeah. Um, you. it's your show, isn't it? Yeah, it's my show. Um, I'm uh, not too, eh, not too excited. Josh, <laughs> I came on here to tell you I can't make it. Josh, bleep all this out for me. Uh, not too excited about that one. Uh, right. Um, yeah, I will promote that I am in the the preliminary stages of starting a new podcast. Um, so follow me on Instagram at Drew Absher is dumb for more details about that. That's all it. Right, Robert. Can't leak any details. You want me to tell you what's about? Yeah, it's uh, I'm just going to be talking to comedians. I'm going to like do a bunch of research and uh, I'm going to just end the podcast right now. This isn't a sincere response. He was getting ready to slam me. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a it was a sincere response. Uh, I'm going to yeah, I'm going to do like an oral history of something from the the years 2000 to 2009. It's going to be called at aughts with Drew Absher. Um, We'll have it up soon. Probably Thursday. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Robert Amoto. Uh now yeah, just add Bobby Amoto on everything. <clears throat> All right, guys. That's our show. That's episode one of the <laughs> podcast. Wait, make uh, Robert they- explain his podcast. What the fuck? No, I'm joking. It's random thoughts. Oh, it's podcast. It's, uh, I have who a, he cheats uh, on his wife huge with. Show. Huge <laughs> huge show coming up with Drew Absher. It's Friday. It's already sold out. You can't get tickets. So yeah. you can catch Robert at your local ASPCA yelling at people who aren't listening. <laughs> I only do corporates now. Yeah. I only yeah. do corporates. <laughs> Animal right. shelters. You can, you can catch Robert. Uh, he'll be at the horse convention at Cal Expo. <laughs> I did a I did a horse fundraiser too. He'll, he'll be doing What's a that? Tight- when did you making fun of me? This is this all you yeah, do. Yeah, you fucking suck. <laughs> yeah. Why do you do stuff like that? All you do now. Yeah, you can catch Robert Amoto. He'll be at the flight attendant's graduation ceremony. Uh, you- <laughs> hey, let me ask you. Let me ask your audience something. Do you guys like parrots? <laughs> do you all like right, you guys. <laughs> I've been Josh Means here with Drew Absher and Bobby Benefit Show. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys. <laughs> Subscribe. Ben Simmons to Portland. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys.